In the Battle of Anlop, the threat of defeat was mostly gone, but the city was nowhere close to being relieved. The 21st Division was stuck between Long Phi FSB and Anlop, as well as at Tao O Bridge. Each day, South Vietnamese forces could only manage to push another 50 meters. Relief was still far away from the city. However, with the North Vietnamese focusing on stopping the relief force, the South Vietnamese soldiers in Anlop started to be able to leave their bunkers. Astonishingly enough, while the rest of the town was reduced to dust and rubble, a singular South Vietnamese flag stood, along with an undamaged statue of the Virgin Mary in the town church. Airstrikes had destroyed much of the North Vietnamese anti-aircraft emplacements around the city, and helicopters could finally fly in reinforcements and supplies. The South Vietnamese soldiers started to set up patrols and launch assaults to widen the perimeter. One of these patrols outflanked a North Vietnamese bunker position in the West Salient and forced them out. The further they pushed, the more North Vietnamese bodies they found. In some arc light strike zones, a couple hundred bodies were found. On May 26, casualty reports indicated that half of the 21st Division's 12,000 men were either killed or wounded. At Dao O, captured North Vietnamese officers said that many of their companies only had 10 men left and that morale was starting to break down. Many of them refused to listen to orders. This would continue on for an additional month as the infantry threw themselves at each other. On June 19th, a coordinated effort with 13 tanks and infantry assaulted North Vietnamese defensive positions. Unfortunately, this force became bogged down in the fighting and bunched up. Mortar and rocket fire destroyed numerous tanks and killed an American advisor. The 21st Division men at Dao O was only 17 kilometers away. Meanwhile, on June 4th, the reconstituted 6th Airborne Battalion flew into Tan Kai FSB. It was the same unit that was surrounded and crushed by the North Vietnamese in the earlier assault on An Lop, and it finally returned to the battlefield. Lieutenant Colonel Nguyen Van Dinh had managed to survive and was leading it to avenge the 6th earlier destruction. They pushed northwards to where Task Force 15 and the 33rd Regiment were, and immediately encountered harsh enemy resistance on June 6. The Airborne managed to destroy enemy positions and easily reach Task Force 15's positions 3 kilometers away from Anlop the following day. On June 8, Task Force 15 and the Airborne pushed forward, engaging Pavan soldiers near Tanbin village. They managed to defeat them, leaving 73 North Vietnamese dead. That afternoon, the 6th met up with its sister units, the 8th and 5th Airborne Battalions, located south of Anlop. The men in Anlop could rejoice that their first reinforcements from Highway 13 had finally arrived. Even though Anlop was reached, the Battle of Dao O Bridge was still raging, and the 33rd Regiment was still stuck on the east side of the highway. A couple of days before, on June 6, the commander and his group, including American advisors, were ambushed and cut off. Fortunately, a couple of A-37s were called in to save the group. Even without direct reinforcements coming up by Highway 13, the anti-aircraft net had been significantly diminished. Tactical airstrikes had gradually been hunting down anti-aircraft gun positions one by one throughout the battle for Anlop. Helicopters started to fly in reinforcements throughout the next several days. 1,500 men flooded into the city with cheers from what remained of the 5th Arvin Division. The wounded could also finally be evacuated. With the reinforcements, the South Vietnamese infantry managed to clear the center of Anlop on June 8th. Rather than wait for Highway 13 to be cleared, General Min immediately ordered the 18th Division's 48th Regiment into Anlop on June 13th and started to pull out the men of the 5th. The 48th Regiment managed to retake the southern hills and directly coordinate fire on Pavan positions on June 17th. With coordinated artillery support, the 81st Airborne Rangers and regular 3rd Rangers managed to retake the northern half of Anlop, while the 7th Regiment took back the west salient. Within days, the perimeter expanded beyond the city limits. With the situation in Anlop clearing up, the Airborne were immediately ordered to push down south and clear parts of Highway 13 on June 18. Afterwards, they were extracted from Binh Long Province via helicopter. The 81st Airborne Rangers were later extracted on the 24th. On June 18, General Nguyen Văn Minh, Commander of Three Corps, publicly declared that the siege of An Lung was over. Allied intel stated that the 5th and 9th NLF divisions were withdrawing back to Cambodia. 
On July 7th, with Anlop secured, South Vietnamese President Nguyen Văn Thiu made a surprise visit to Anlop accompanied by several significant South Vietnamese generals. The president immediately promoted all soldiers, including General Hung, to the next rank and prayed at a surviving statue of Christ. He made a speech declaring Binh Long to be a symbol of the victory to behold for the free world. At the time, i was still facing the most intense fighting of the Easter Offensive. Good news from elsewhere in South Vietnam would have been very welcome. Even with Anlop secured, the last major engagement in the Battle of Anlop was at Tao O Bridge. It was the last point of Pavan resistance. On June 18th, the 25th Division started to move up Highway 13 to help the 21st. Seeing that the 32nd was still stuck at Tao O, General Nguyen Ban Minh sent in the 46th Regiment of the 25th Division to relieve it. The 32nd Regiment had lost 40% casualties throughout its attempt to push north. The 31st Regiment continued fighting, but its senior American advisor was killed, then its own commander was killed a week later. The 21st Arvin Division was completely spent. General Minh sent the rest of the 25th Division to replace the 21st. The 25th Division immediately maneuvered to surround Tao O Bridge and destroyed the rest of the positions on July 20th. Highway 13 was declared open. It was the end of the North Vietnamese Nguyen Hoi Offensive in Three Corps, and the city of An Lop remained in South Vietnamese hands. The longest siege of the Vietnam War ended in a South Vietnamese victory. Even then, it was a Pyrrhic victory. Only six buildings remained standing. Tragedy struck when an entourage of high-ranking American advisors, including Brigadier General Richard Tallman, second-in-command of Track, decided to visit Anlop on July 9th. Colonel Ulmer met with the general directly as he landed, but a 105mm artillery round landed nearby. The group scattered, but a second round landed directly on the general's group. Several South Vietnamese soldiers ran over to help, and a South Vietnamese military surgeon tried his best to attempt emergency surgery. Tallman was later picked up by helicopter, but wouldn't make the entire flight path. It was the highest ranking American death of the Easter Offensive of 1972. In the next few months, the 18th Arvin Division replaced the 5th entirely and retook parts of Quan Lai. Later, the 18th itself returned to its position east of Saigon when three Ranger groups replaced it. Months later, the ceasefire was finally signed in January 1973. 8,000 South Vietnamese were killed in Anlop, 1,000 of them civilians. American analysts estimated that the North Vietnamese received 25,000 casualties. Hanoi admitted that more than half of its tanks were lost. American media reactions were mixed, saying that the city died bravely, focusing on South Vietnamese losses and incompetence. However, South Vietnamese performance aside, Anlop remained in our hands at the end of the Summer of Red Fire.